Hello everybody, welcome to today's video. Today we will be covering the law of sines. So we'll be going over some non-right triangles finally. So we're going to derive and use the law of sines. Uh, we're gonna go over different types of triangles where we can use the law of sines, but specifically for SSA triangles, uh, there is this ambiguous case where we need to do a little thinking. Uh, so we'll talk about that. Uh, we'll find the area of oblique triangles, which are non-right triangles, and then we'll look at some application problems. So. Uh, here is a motivating idea here that the work that we've done so far uh, has relied on having right triangles. And obviously there are uh, triangles that we are going to need to use that aren't right triangles out in the world. So uh, any triangle that is not a right triangle, we call an oblique triangle. So you'll see that language floating around now. Um, solving an oblique triangle means finding uh, all the measurements here. So we're going to find all three angles and we're going to find all three sides. That's what it means to solve one of these triangles. Um, so to do so, we need to start with at least three of the values, uh, including at least one of the sides. So here we just have some different uh, triangle uh, congruencies, I suppose. But uh, here we're not really thinking about congruent triangles. But we've got this angle side angle. Uh, relationship. So if we know uh, two of the angles and the side in between them, then we can use these ideas here. Uh, if we know two of the angles and one of the adjacent sides, uh, then we can use the ideas here. Uh, or if we know two of the sides and um, the angle that is not in between them, uh, then we can use these uh, relationships that we've got here. So um, yeah, so we need to at least be in one of these cases uh, to move forward and, and we'll see that. So um, so in, in any of these oblique triangles that we have, if we want to do some work, we could always drop in an altitude, meaning we could just uh, put in, you know, some some height here, some perpendicular line from one vertex to the opposite side, and we could make two tri right triangles, and then we could apply things that we know um, using trigonometry from here, but it sure would be nice if we could just cut to the chase and not have to draw uh, an altitude in every time to create two right triangles. Um, so what we are going to do here is use the fact um, that the ratio of the measurement of one of the angles to the length of its opposite side will always be equal to the other two ratios of angle measure to opposite side. That is just a mouthful, and I lost myself even saying that out loud. But let's take a look uh, at what this says uh, in terms of uh, our picture here, um, that the sine of, we'll pick al angle alpha, uh, is equal to the height, so we're, you know, talking about dropping in this altitude here, the height uh, over the B value, and the sine of beta is going to be equal to the height over the A value. So we're just looking at uh, opposite over hypotenuse here, so for both of these uh, angles, alpha and beta. Um, and then I could do a little bit of rearranging, uh, and we could see that H... Uh, if I multiply uh, the first one with B on both sides, or if I multiply the second one here with A on both sides, uh, we would see that we would get that H is equal to um, B sine alpha, but that that's also equal to A sine beta. So we're seeing that there are some equivalent relationships here, which is what that mouthful of a sentence says uh, right above the work here. Uh, and then if I kind of, you know, just focusing on this portion of the equality here, uh, I've used H to develop this relationship, but the, now this is where my focus is. Uh, if I go ahead and divide both sides uh, by A over B, so again, this won't give us H anymore, uh, but we are just looking at three, this relationship. These Bs will cancel uh, and these As will cancel. And then what we'll have is this relationship that uh, sine uh, alpha is to the side A as sine beta is to its opposite side B. Uh, and then if we apply this relationship uh, further, we'll just cut to the chase here uh, that the sine of this other angle gamma uh, uh, has the same ratio to its opposite side C. So we have this nice relationship here. Uh, and in order to keep things consistent, let me just write this down. Uh, I will note that the standard way Uh, to label a triangle uh, is having A opposite alpha, B opposite to beta, uh, and C 
opposite to gamma in order to keep this relationship always true. If we changed uh, what side was across from what angle, then we would need to change things here. But the way that we have things written always will give us a, a true statement, so long as we always have our triangles labeled the way that we've said here uh, in the standard way. Uh, but this is the law of science, this relationship here. So we'll just go to the, the next page where it is uh, written out a little bit more cleanly, and we've got uh, actually every ver or both versions here. Uh, so given a triangle uh, with angles and opposite sides labeled in the standard way, uh, the ratio of the measurement of an angle to the length of its opposite side will always uh, or will be equal to the other two ratio of angle measure to opposite side. So again, another mouthful there. Um, but all proportions will be equal, and symbolically we have what we have uh, on the previous page. So uh, sine of alpha over A is the same as sine of beta over B, which is the same as sine of gamma over C. Or if it is more helpful to take the reciprocal of all of those, we still have equality no matter what. So uh, A over the sine of alpha is the same as B over the sine of beta, which is the same as C over the sine of gamma. Uh, so we can use this relationship to solve uh, any triangle now, just using the law of sine. So let's go ahead and do that in this first example here. Uh, so we're asked to solve this triangle. Uh, since we know two of the angles here, I think the easiest first step here is to find the missing angle. So uh, hopefully re we remember from geometry that uh, the sum of all of the angles in any triangle is 180 degrees. Uh, and so to get the uh, missing angle beta here, we're going to say, okay, well, we know there's 180 degrees here total, and we're going to subtract off 50 degrees for alpha, and we'll subtract off 30 degrees for gamma, and that's going to tell us that beta is 100 degrees. So there we go. There's our first bit of the triangle solved um, by just using the fact that the angles should sum to 180 degrees in this triangle here. Um, so now we will look for the sides. We've got all the angles. We know one of the sides, so we know that uh, what we are calling A is 10. Uh, so we'll start setting up some of our relationships here. We will say that, uh, and which way do I want to go just so I am starting off the right way. But I know that uh, there's this relationship between the sine of 50 degrees uh, and 10. In fact, I want to do that the other way around. I said that I should be careful the way that I'm writing this and which one I'm choosing. You can get the answer no matter what, uh, even if I had kept it that way. I just know that the algebra will be a little bit uh, quicker if I set it up with this proportion. Again, if you're not which, sure which way to do it, and you'll probably notice those patterns as we go. Um, but what I'm saying is that to uh, solve for one of these other sides, so I think that I will solve for C first. So C is the length, so I wanna get, make sure that my side lengths are both on top and my sines are both on bottom. Uh, so what angle am I looking at here? Uh, if I'm looking at C, then across from it is gamma, which is 30 degrees. So I'm going to set this equal to C over the sine of 30 degrees. Uh, and from here, I can solve for C. Uh, so if I multiply both sides now by the sine of 30 degrees, and this is why I knew this setup would be a little bit quicker because C is in the numerator on the right-hand side. We can just do this one multiplication and they cancel here. And we'll have that C is equal to 10 sine of 30 degrees over the sine of 50 degrees. And then we just grab our calculator and we punch those numbers in. We make sure that uh, our calculator is in degree mode and we would get that C is about 6.5. So C is about, whoops, 6.5. Uh, all right, and now the last thing we need to do here is, is get the uh, side B. So uh, maybe if I just move this work. Okay, now that we've got that work out of the way, we will uh, solve for our B value here. Um, so setting up the same proportion, I know that uh, 10 is going to be uh, the same proportion to 50 degrees, the sine of 50 degrees, uh, as uh, now we're looking at our B value, uh, which is across from beta. So B over sine of 100 degrees. And this is also why we needed to find that uh, that angle measure first. Um, we needed to find it first. Anyway, it also just happened to be the easiest thing to find first. So uh, now uh, if I multiply both sides, as I did before, but this time by sine of 100 degrees, 
sine of 100 degrees. We'll cancel on that side and we'll get that B is equal to 10 times sine of 100 degrees over sine of 50 degrees. And we will punch that into our calculator as well. And we'll get that B is about 12.9. Uh, so we'll go add that in here. That B is about 12.9. Uh, and now we have got this triangle solved. So since we've got the triangle here, we've just got everything uh, labeled, but we know that uh, the angles are 50 degrees, 30 degrees. Those were given. We found that the other angle was 100 degrees. And then we solved for each side. We knew that one of the sides was 10 and we got the others to be 12.9 and 6.5 approximately. So there we go. We have solved this triangle using, using the law of sines. All right. Uh, well, uh, that is, you know, a somewhat so of a straightforward process once you get a, a few practices in here, but there is an ambiguous case, which we need to think about here. So, um, in some cases, more than one triangle may satisfy the given criteria, um, which we describe as an ambiguous case. So triangles classified as SSA, where we know uh, two of the sides and one of the angles that is not the one in between them, uh, that may result in one solution, two solutions, or no solution. So here we have uh, all of those scenarios. Uh, so the first one, here there would be no solution uh, because this does not form a triangle, and that is if the A value, this side here, is less than the height. So the height you know, it's going to be this entire height uh, of forming the right triangle here. And if that A value is less uh, than the H value, than the height, then this isn't a triangle. It doesn't have an A side that's long enough to reach to the other side. Uh, so that is why we're getting no solution here. Um, it could be that the A value is equal to the height. And in that case, we just get our standard old right triangle. So we can just go back to things that we uh, know from straightforward uh you know, trigonometric relationships. Uh, uh, it could be that the A value is bigger than the H value, so we will have a solution, but if A is also less than uh, its uh, other side here, so not the C value, but the, the B value, um, then we might have two triangles. So it could be that uh, A cuts in like this, and we have uh, a triangle with this obtuse angle here, or it could be uh, that a swings out uh, this way, and now we've got this uh, kind of bigger looking triangle without this big obtuse angle. So um, just some different scenarios, and we're going to have to test both of those. So in that case, there are two solutions. Uh, or it could be uh, that the A value is bigger than the B value and bigger than the H value, in which case then we just get uh, one solution here. So one solution here and also one solution here. So um, we just need to investigate as we go through and solve some problems uh, and see if a solution is even valid um, and then just check to see if maybe there is a possibility for more than one solution. So let's take a look at an example that does that. All right, so we're asked to solve for this triangle here. Um, so I noticed that we've got alpha, which means that uh, the side across from that is what we're going to call A. Uh, and then we know what the side across from beta is. So that means we've got a B there. That must mean that this other side we will call C. And we've got alpha, beta, and gamma labeled already. So just getting some labels on here to make sure that we're uh, labeled in the standard way here. Uh, but I know that there is a relationship between the sine of 35 degrees and its opposite side A, which is 6. Uh, and I know uh, something about the side opposite of uh, beta, so we'll put in sine of beta as the first thing that we're going to solve for here, and that is over 8. If I multiply both sides by 8 in effort to solve for sine of beta, in an effort to solve for beta, uh, those are going to cancel, so what we're going to have is that sine of beta uh, is equal to 8 times the sine of 35 degrees all over 6. Uh, if I take the sine inverse of both sides there, we'll get that beta is equal to <coughs> sine inverse of 8 sine of 35 degrees all over 6. And then we'll put that into a calculator, and we'll see that beta uh, is about 49.9 uh, degrees. But if we look over at this triangle here, we notice that 
at least the way that it's drawn here, which it doesn't have to be drawn to scale, but I'm noticing that that's an obtuse angle, which should be more than 90 degrees. So it might be worth investigating that perhaps there is more than one triangle that uh, satisfies uh, what we've got going on here. Uh, which means if we think about that other uh, page, when we looked at the ambiguous case, there could be uh, a second triangle uh, like this, where we ca could call this angle here beta prime instead of beta. It's related to beta, but it's not exactly beta. <clears throat> and that looks like uh, an acute angle. So I am proposing that what we actually found here uh, was beta prime uh, in this other triangle, which could be a separate solution here. Um, so just to verify, so to see if this other uh, triangle even exists, what we're going to do is uh, look at beta. Uh, and since beta prime uh, is here, uh, and what we're building is technically an isosceles triangle by looking at this uh, this other triangle here, um, we know that beta will be equal to 180 degrees uh, minus beta prime, uh, which in this case is about 49.9 degrees. So beta is going to be uh, about 130.1 degrees. So that tells us that this angle beta that we're looking for is actually uh, 130.1 degrees. Uh, now, just to verify, we should be able to find another angle up here. If we can't, then this other triangle that we're proposing with this obtuse uh, angle doesn't exist. Um, but if we do uh, 180 degrees, so here I'm solving for gamma. If I'm solving for gamma, that'll be 180 degrees. Uh, we'll subtract off 130.1 degrees, and then we'll subtract off 35 degrees, uh, and that gives us 14.9 degrees. So yeah, it looks like this other triangle uh, totally possibly exists. It looks like we're getting two different triangles here, uh, one with a beta value of 130.1, and the other one with the beta value that we found uh, explicitly of uh, 49.9. So um, I'm going to draw a separate triangle here. So I've got everything uh, on the page. So maybe I'll switch back over to white. That way it kind of matches a little bit here. So what we're getting is this triangle now. Uh, that looks like this. This is still alpha. This is still gamma. Uh, but now we'll call this uh, beta prime. Uh, this B value is still equal to eight. This A value is still equal to six. Uh, and now we'll call this C value here C prime. You can see that uh, C is this sh shorter leg here. If uh, this gamma angle is swung out further and it becomes the obtuse looking angle here, then uh, we're going to uh, need C prime instead of C. Those will be different values. Um, okay, so we now need to figure, oh, let me just erase kind of my other thinking here off of this side so that we can have both of our triangles back. So one of them is going to have this beta value being 130.1 degrees, which means that the gamma value is 14.9 degrees. Uh, and then for the second solution that we've got going on here, uh, we know that alpha is still 35 degrees, um, but uh, now we're looking at beta prime being 49.9 degrees. Uh, and then to find gamma in this case, there's 180 degrees total in a triangle. We know one of the angles is 35 degrees. We know the other angle is about 49.9 degrees, which tells us that this gamma is going to be about uh, 95.1 degrees. So two different solutions going on here. Uh, we know what the A and the B values are. So the last thing we need to find here is the C value and the C prime value. Uh, so uh, setting up the relationships that we have here, uh, C is across from 14.9. So we're looking at the sine of 14.9 degrees. Um, and I'm going to use the exact angle that I have here. I'm still going to stick with the sine of 35 degrees, uh, since there is no approximation for that one. Uh, and that has the same relationship to its uh, opposite side, 6. So if I do some solving here, if I multiply both sides uh, by the sine of 14.9, and we're still dividing by the sine of 35 degrees, uh, we will get that C is about uh, 2.7. So this is approximately our C value. Let's put a little box around that. So C is about 2.7. Uh, and then to find our C prime value, 
Uh, this is now going to be across from 95.1. So 95.1 degrees. And I'll still use 6 uh, and sine of 35 degrees. <clears throat> and this will tell us that C prime, so solving here the same way we did before, I'm running out of room a little bit, but just to cut to the chase, uh, we'll do the algebra there and we'll see that C prime is about 10.4. So there we go. We have uh, solved this triangle. There actually is two solutions based on the information that we were given here. Um, one of them has angles 35 degrees, 130.1, and 14.9. That's the one on top. Uh, and it has its respective sides uh, of uh, 6, 8, and about 2.7. And then we've got the other triangle here with its uh, different angles uh, and its different C prime side length there. So. Uh, next, we'll take a look at an example uh, where maybe uh, there's not two solutions. So still the same type of uh, ambiguous case that we're in. Um, but uh, when we check this one, we might see that there's still just one solution and what happens when there is only one solution. So uh, taking a look at what we've got here, um, <clears throat> do I need to label anything? This will be our B side. I just like to put in these extra labels just so I'm super clear on what's what here. Um, if that's beta, uh, if that's alpha and that's beta, then this must be gamma, which means that that is our C value. Uh, okay, so I know something about the sine of 85 uh, and 12. So I will look at this relationship here. Sine of 85 degrees uh, is to 12. As let's take a look at beta since we know, well, we know both of these others. Uh, yeah, we, we know uh, what the side opposite beta is, so we'll do sine of beta uh, over 9, uh, and then I can multiply both sides by 9, so I'll do that in a different color, there's my relationship, now the work I'm doing is I'm going to multiply both sides by 9, so that these cancel here, uh, so we'll have sine of beta <clears throat> is equal to 9 times the sine of 85 degrees over 12, uh, but what I'm trying to find here uh, is beta. So I'm going to take the sine inverse of both sides and we'll get beta that is e uh, beta is equal to the sine inverse of nine times sine of 85 degrees all over 12. And we'll put that into a calculator and we'll see that beta is approximately uh, 48.3 degrees. Okay, so now we know that beta is about 48.3 degrees. We just want to investigate, okay, is this actually beta or is this some sort of beta prime? Uh, maybe maybe it's creating some uh, other sort of uh, triangle here. Uh, maybe there are two solutions. So what I'm just going to do is just check for another solution uh, quickly off to the side. Check for another solution. Uh, so what I'm going to do to do this... Um, is before we said that if um, beta was here, it would have been 180 degrees minus beta prime, uh, which here we're proposing that perhaps beta prime is the 48.3 degrees. So I'm going to subtract 48.3 degrees here, and we would get that uh, beta is about uh, 131.7 degrees. So we know gamma is 85. We're saying if there was another beta value, uh, it would be 131.7, which means that alpha would be 180 degrees minus 85 minus 131.7, uh, which is about negative uh, 36.7, which can't happen. That means that one of the angles here is negative, which does not give us a triangle anymore. Uh, that doesn't make sense. So there is not another solution. So before, you notice when we checked, uh, we got that beta was 130 degrees, or if we if there was another uh, angle here, well, originally we computed was 49.9, we checked this other beta value, we got 131.1, and then when we checked the third uh, angle, we got an angle that actually exists, or a, a positive angle, which meant that that triangle exists. As opposed to down here, when we try and do the same thing, uh, we check this other to see if this other beta value exists. Uh, when we check the other alpha value, um, we see that that is negative, and then that means there's not a second solution. So that is how we know that there's only one solution here. 
Um, so I'm done, done with this. We'll just box that off to the side. That was just me checking. Um, so that tells us that alpha is going to be 180 degrees minus 85 degrees minus 48.3, which was an approximation, which tells us alpha is going to be uh, about uh, 46.7. Um, okay, so let's get these labeled in here now. We said that alpha is about 46.7, so 46.7, and we said that beta is about 48.3, so we've got these values labeled in here now. We'll just put little boxes around those. Uh, so the last thing here to do is just uh, solve for this A value. Um, so to solve for A, uh, we're going to just set up one of our relationship, relationships here. Uh, so I'll say that 12 is to the sine of 85 degrees. Um, and now I'm looking for A, which is a cross from alpha, so sine of 46.7 degrees. Uh, and then I will multiply both sides by sine of 46.7. And this will give me that A is equal to 12 times the sine of 46.7 degrees all over the sine of 85 degrees, which will give us that A is about 8.8. .8. So there we go. We have solved this triangle. Uh, sometimes it is nice to just write the answer out explicitly. So I'll just say alpha is equal to 46.7 degrees. Beta is, or that was about, I should have said. Uh, alpha is about 46.7 degrees. Beta is about uh, 48.3 degrees. Gamma is exactly 85 degrees. That was given in the problem here. Uh, and then we've got that A is about 8.8. .8. We had to estimate to get that one, but B is exactly nine and C is exactly 12. So just explicitly writing down all the values here for this triangle. All right, we will take a look at this next example here. Uh, here we're not given a uh, uh, some figure to look at. We're just told um, the characteristics of this triangle. And we could try and draw one in if we wanted to. It's not that um, we can't use it, but uh, we might see something interesting here. So I'm just drawing in a random, random old triangle. And this says, find uh, all possible triangles if one side has a length of four opposite an angle of 50 degrees. So let's just put in a 50 degrees here. It doesn't matter which one we label as 50 degrees. Uh, this isn't going to be drawn to scale anyway. Um, and I, but I know that four is opposite and one of the other sides has a length of 10. So it doesn't matter which side we pick, it will be adjacent to 50 degrees no matter what. Um, so we'll just label this bottom side 10. Uh, okay, so what I'm looking at here is that the sine of 50 degrees is to four. Uh, let me maybe label my triangle so I know what's what. We'll call this alpha, we'll call this beta, we'll call this gamma which means that this is A, um, this is B, <clears throat> and this would be C. Um, and I know, well, let's see, what are we looking for here? Well, we can try and solve for beta uh, since we know that the side opposite that is 10. So sine of beta uh, is to 10. So then we'll multiply both sides by 10. And we will get that sine of beta uh, is equal to 10 times the sine of 50 degrees all over 4, uh, which will give us that the sine of beta is about, so if we put that into our calculator, we would see that we would get 1.915. Uh, but we might notice, so I usually like to plug exact values into my calculator, so I would have plugged uh, sine inverse of this into my calculator and we would have gotten no solution uh, or does not exist or or something like that. Um, our calculator will return an error uh, because when we calculate that, we see that we get this number, which is not in the range uh, for the sine function. So that means there is no angle beta for sine to return this value. You know, sometimes we did similar things looking at uh, the uh, 
the unit circle here and this is a sine value of one, a sine value of two is up here. And no matter what angle you choose, we're never going to reach a sine value of 1.9. So uh, for that reason, uh, there is there is no beta value that does this. So that means there is no triangle that meets these uh, properties here. Um, so there is no solution. There is no possible triangle uh, that has this property. So what we're actually seeing here is that if this is 50 degrees and this side is four and this side is 10, then uh, this four length is not long enough to reach the other side. Our, our triangle actually looks like this. So uh, no solution just by looking at um, the trigonometry of the situ situation. Um, and like I said, if you had tried to plug this part into your calculator, it would have just given back an arrow or you can compute it and you see that we just uh, physically get something that's not in the range of the sine function. So there we go. Next, we will talk about finding the area uh, of these oblique triangles. Um, hopefully you recall that to find the area of a triangle, it's one half uh, the base times the height. Um, for oblique triangles, we have to find the height before we can use that area formula, which can sometimes be a little cumbersome. Um, so if we just take a look at these two triangles below, one uh, is acute and one is obtuse. Uh, we can draw a perpendicular to represent the height uh, and then apply the trigonometric property that sine of alpha is equal to opposite over hypotenuse to write an equation uh, for area in oblique triangles. So just a little note here that in the obtuse angle, we're actually, uh, or obtuse triangle, we're actually using this alpha prime instead of alpha, but alpha and alpha prime uh, uh, return, the, the sine of alpha and alpha prime return the same value. So um, it doesn't matter which one we use here. Just pointing out that little that little note. <clears throat> uh, but if we take a look here, what we're saying is that the sine of alpha uh, or alpha prime is going to be the opposite side, which is H over the hypotenuse, which is C or alpha prime is going to be the opposite side, which is H over the hypotenuse C. And if we do a little bit of rearranging, we get that H is equal to C times the sine of alpha. And if then if I make that substitution, in for h here, uh, then we get that a is equal to one half the base, which is that bottom, the b value there, which is still uh, our b value here. Uh, and instead of writing h, I'm going to write c sine of alpha. Uh, so notice that for b and c, alpha is the uh, angle that is between them. So for b and c, alpha is the angle between them. For b and c, alpha is the angle between them. But we could have started with gamma and looked at its opposite uh, over hypotenuse um, and done the same thing. So we actually get all three versions uh, here. And the uh, way I described it is true for all of these. The angle in between B and C is alpha. The angle in between A and C is beta. And the angle between A and B is gamma. Uh, so remembering that helps me remember um, how to get this right on the spot. Uh, but now we can compute the area of uh, any oblique triangle if we know uh, some of the values here. So here we're asked to find the area of a triangle with uh, sides 90, 52, and the angle between them is 102. If we wanna verify that that is what we have here, you can always just draw in a quick little triangle. We'll call this uh, alpha. We'll <coughs> call this alpha. We'll call this beta and we'll call this gamma, which means that this is A, this is B, and this is C. We're told that A is 90, we're told that B is 52, and we're told that gamma is 102 degrees. So clearly mine's not drawn to scale because this should be an obtuse angle and it's not. That's okay, we already saw other uh, pictures where things aren't drawn to scale. Uh, we're just using this to help us here. And yeah, okay, we're, we're in the proper form. Uh, so if I want to find this area, <clears throat> this is going to be uh, A, or we need our one half, can't forget our one half, one half uh, A times B times the sine of gamma, since those are the values that we know. So one half, A is 90, B is 52, times the sine of 102 degrees. <clears throat> uh, and this is going to give us, put this into a calculator, make sure you're in degrees, 2,289 square units. So there we go. Pretty for, uh, straightforward application here um, once we uh, get the, the formulas here. Um, so yeah.
All right, taking a look at this example here, we have an application problem. So it looks like we are some uh, air traffic controllers now. And uh, we know that there's a couple of radar stations 20 miles apart. And they detect uh, an aircraft between them. We know the angle of elevation between each of the radars and the aircraft. Um, and what we want to do is figure out the altitude of the aircraft, so how high the altitude is. So if we drop in this altitude here, hopefully that word altitude is making sense, um, we can maybe try and find um, this H value, which will give us the altitude of the plane. So uh, the first thing I think we want to might want to do is solve some of this triangle. Since we know two of the uh, angles down here being 15 and 35, if I want to find that third angle, then that'll be 180 degrees minus 15 degrees minus 35 degrees. Uh, which tells us that this last angle here is going to be 130 degrees. So this angle here, this entire big angle is 130 degrees. Uh, and I'm solving that because I know that the side opposite that is 20 miles, uh, which will help me set up uh, our law of sines here. So I know that uh, the sine um, <clears throat> or that 20 miles uh, is to the sine of 130 degrees. Uh, as uh, let's take a look and let's solve for this uh, side, this long side over here, we'll call A. So that means that this one is alpha for what it's worth in case we need it. Uh, that A uh, is proportional to the sine of 35 degrees. Whoops, not 350 degrees, 35 degrees. <coughs> uh, so then we can solve for A. Maybe just move down here where there's more space. So I'm multiplying both sides by sine of 35 degrees. Uh, so that those cancel, and now I'm getting that A is equal to 20 times sine of 35 degrees over sine of 130 degrees, uh, which is about uh, 14.98, and we are in miles here. So now I know that A is about 14.98 miles. Uh, and now that I know something about the base of this right triangle and the hypotenuse of this right triangle, uh, I can, uh, well, I could use the Pythagorean theorem or I could just use uh, the fact that we know something about the sine of 15 degrees. The sine of 15 degrees is equal to its opposite side over its hypotenuse, which is 14.98. So I'll make this an approximation now that I'm using an approximated value. Uh, so we'll get that uh, H is approximately 14.98 times the sine of 15 degrees, uh, which tells us that H is going to be approximately 3.88 miles. So now we know the altitude uh, of this aircraft is 3.88 miles. All right. From there, it looks like it's time to get some practice in. So um, good luck with the homework. Please let me know if you have questions and I'll see you in the next video.